Scott Chinero. How are you, sir? Good to CEO see you, man. CEO of Nirvana, good, good, formerly good. Uh, with QLogic, um, veteran of the Cube. You are a Cube alumni. You're on the on the leaderboard list of uh, uh, the, some of the top, most prominent Cube interviews. Good. Pat Gelsinger, you are. Yeah, you've been on several neck. times. We had you on a, a VMworld, had you on an EMC World last yeah, year. Yeah. Yeah. You'd make a good blogger, actually, because uh, you have that leaderboard mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a good ball. Uh, I'm only kidding. You're doing great as a CEO. Congratulations, <laughs> by you. the way, on the new on the new role. Um, so, Nirvonix, you guys are, are are rocking and rolling. Yep. We've been seeing a lot of you guys in the news lately. We've we've had you on the cube, obviously in uh, Palo right. Alto. Uh-huh. Um, the press coverage of you guys have been fantastic. You've had the most the most amazing um, phenomenon happen over the past month. Obviously, the crisis in Japan has been a catastrophe. Right. You guys put out. The olive branch of essentially saying, "Hey, we have a value proposition right. with moving stuff uh, in around and data centers." You guys put out this offer mm-hmm. and had this most amazing response. Could right. you just talk quickly about that uh, yeah. latest trend? And so this is the CEO of uh, Nirvonix, uh, Scott Jenner. So, I, you know, you guys know I, I used to work at Hitachi Data System. So, you know, I have a lot of friends in Japan, right? And um, you know, so we were watching that pretty closely. Uh, on the weekend, I was sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, wow, our data center is actually 250 miles away from anything that's going on. It's an Equinox data center. Um, so in that sense, uh, we had no concerns whatsoever in the sense of disaster recovery. But they did talk about they were going to be rolling blackouts. You know, um, Equinox basically told us, hey, no concerns. We're working with the government. Um, but we... we you never know. We never know, yeah, right? You yeah. never know. And this is people's data, and it's the most critical stuff for them running their business. So we sat in a room with our engineering, and I said, hey, I'd like to go out and offer to all of our people or all of our customers in our Japanese location um, the option to potentially move out temporarily, right? And um, so we actually decided to go do that. So we offered them to move out of the uh, Japan location temporarily. Um, it, we offered them two options. One is keep it in Japan because of performance reasons and do a second copy so they had a disaster recovery situation. So there's guys who only do one copy and they did two. Um, and then we basically offered just to move them out completely. Um, you know, once again, surprisingly, we had a lot of a handful of customers who actually took us up on it. And you didn't charge them for we it? We didn't charge them for anything, no. Um, we thought it was the right thing to do. It, the other thing I thought was interesting is that this technology really created an interesting dynamic because we did it because we wanted to help our customers. It got a lot of press. And the press that it really got was this fact of how cloud technology allows you to do this kind of stuff, right? So kind of a you know afterthought, if you want to call it. We had we had a lot of interviews of people saying, "Wow, you know, we never really thought of cloud as an enable tool to be able to do this with customers, right? Which is able to quickly allow them to move their data outside of a location that could have a potential regional disaster." And uh, so, uh, so a gesture of of massively great will, and obviously you needed because you know you know that market, you right. know the situation there, turned into a business opportunity for you. Is it like a? because well, that's I, not your I, primary I mean, business, no. is it? I mean, no, it's not. It's just a function well, of your technology, well, right? Yeah. Just so, just so we're clear, I mean, we, you know, we didn't we didn't make any money on any of this. Stuff, yeah, this right? is totally. This cool. was th- this came out more around the fact that all of a sudden people were sitting in a room going, "Wow, we never really thought about if we put our data in a cloud." that you could quickly move the data out. So if somebody was had a traditional storage product in their data center in Japan, um, they'd have to back it up to tape and hopefully move that off. And you know, as you saw some of the roads there and stuff, yeah, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't really. pretty. The airport was closed for a while, right. the whole bit, right? So how do you get how do you get it out? Um, you know, by putting the data in the cloud and being able to move the data off very quickly to anywhere in the U.S. or in Europe, um, it just, I think it created a lot of buzz around, wow, we never thought about cloud in that sense, um, you know, for kind of a disaster recovery or a contingency for a regional disaster. Well, congratulations. So. It's great leadership on your part to yeah. do the right thing. And I'm really psyched that you got a lot yeah. of visibility in that. So good job. You guys are getting a lot of um, sort of confirmation of the messaging that we've heard coming right. out of Nirvonix, right? Particularly the enterprise class cloud. You're seeing here at this event i mean i just got here but i was been reading you know earlier and Mm -hmm. i did a lot of talk about you know true cloud enterprise class cloud you've been you've been banging that drum certainly since you came on and nirvonix is that's the the heritage of nirvonix talk about that a little bit yeah so you know it's interesting and i I think the big thing that we've changed over the last you know called six months is we repositioned the company and the big reposition was when most people said nirvonix if they knew who we were um they would probably have said public cloud you know, and public is very sure. important to us. Yep. We have our data centers and, you know, seven locations. And, you know, roughly still about 90% of my customers um, are in the public cloud. One of the, I was on a panel earlier, and the big discussion that we came up with was this conversation around, so is anyone really using, 
enterprise type data in the cloud. And I said, well, let me go down the list, right? And I, I listed off, you know, 15 customers. I said, these are big name customers. Can you share some of those with us? Or? Oh, yeah, I said, you know, GE's using us, you know, Comcast, Fox, you know, NBC, Cisco, um, you know, we went down the list. Do they have enterprise data? I mean, you know, it's yeah, not exactly. just start, start to split hair about what they mean by well, enterprise data, but they, well, they are it, huge it, enterprises. Yeah, well, the data is in the eye of the beholder, but go ahead. Exactly. And then, you know, the other discussion we got into a lot was, are people using cloud, um, public cloud for, you know, primary data? And it was interesting, and um, Mike from EMC, uh, what's Mike's last name? He um, runs their cloud. Um, Mike Feinberg. Feinberg, yeah. So Mike... Um, you know, Mike and I were actually on the same page, is that how we defined primary data 10 years ago is probably not the right way to define primary data today. I have a lot of customers who use our cloud for what, you know, those companies consider primary, you know, tier one data. Mm -hmm. um, the difference is, is that when we think of primary tier one data, um, a lot of times we think of Oracle online databases. We think of, you know, transactional databases. Right. The new companies that are emerging and the new applications that are emerging aren't built that way, right? You know, so they're not online applications. Give an example. Um, well, an uh, example would be, um, you know, there's a lot of web 2.0 companies, right? Um, you know, and how they pull data. We've got a lot of people who, who actually use um, Financial their, services, too. Would that be an example? Which one? Financial services. Yeah, financial services is another one. Um, but we have a lot of customers who, um, you know, have their websites, and they use our cloud for their websites. Now, you would probably say, oh, my God, how do they do that? You'd think it would be too slow. Um, but it's not. You know, because they design the product. You know, they design these websites to be able to do these upload downloads. Um, I hate dating sites. You know, most of the stuff that's in these dating sites. You know, the pictures and all that unstructured data and the information about yeah. you know who they are and what they are. Uh, we've got a lot of dating sites that you know that data is in the cloud, and they're pulling it down. The moment you hit a button and say I'm interested in that person, it comes down right away. That's the new normal, as people yeah. are calling it. That, the new that's, application. That's primary data to them, right? There's that is real live primary data to them. It's not a backup archive. And so we have a lot of customers doing that type of stuff. And but you know, but backup archive is is a is a good use case. I mean, use case those two use cases it's, for it's for huge. the cloud, right? I mean, it's huge. I, I, when I talk to uh, the Wikibon members, uh, I would say two thirds of the data in their enterprise is tier three or tier four. Right. Ninety percent of the data doesn't get touched right. after ninety days. Yep. Um, and 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 if you look at recovery. Most of the recoveries uh, are done on data that's 24 hours old, right. and then after that, it's a very steep exponential curve, and right. it shouldn't be there. It should be just right. in the cloud somewhere. It's essentially stale data that you're never going to touch. Why right. do I want that on premise? Right. So 65 percent or greater um, data that's being created today is kind of this low performance, unstructured, large blocks of data, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and going back to your point is, is that a lot of it is very low performance. And so you back it up, you put it in the cloud. Um, you know, I'll give you a good, good example is that we have a lot of customers who are doing snaps, right? Snaps are big. If you're a NetApp customer, you're doing snaps, right? Right. If you're a VM, you know, VMware customer, you're doing snapshots all the time. Well, snapshots are backups, right? You know, most of the time you're not going to use it. So, but where do they store that stuff? They store it on tier one storage most of the time. They do a snap on NetApp and they back it up to a NetApp box, right? They do a snap in VMware and they're backing it up to, you know, an EMC or a NetApp box. Those are backups. They should be off into the cloud. So we're seeing a lot more companies now writing interfaces to back that stuff into the cloud. Um, so, but backup and archive is still one of our biggest areas. The other one is data collaboration, right? We see a lot of companies, you know, wanting to share data globally and the cloud allows you to do that. So, you know, when I look at it today, every time I walk into a new customer, and I've probably been in front of 60 customers in the last, you know, 75 to 90 days, I've never walked out of a meeting where either there was a follow-up meeting scheduled or there was a proof of concept starting. So, you know, the cloud is here. You never walked out where that didn't happen. That didn't yeah, happen, yeah. yeah. I mean, cloud is here. The enterprise customers are interested in it. Um, and I think the cool thing that we've done which is uniquely different than anyone else, is that, first of all, I want to make sure I'm clear about something. When I talk about cloud, I talk about usage-based cloud. A lot of people don't, um, you know, and we've talked about that before. You talk about pay as you go. Pay as you go, yeah. if, you know, I'm not selling What I call true cloud. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and it's not semantics, right? It's, I mean, no, it's, it's, well, it's, no, it's not, but you know, the point is, is that. You if know, you pay as you go, it's cloud. Right? Yeah. I mean, right. that's what you're saying. Right, but there's a lot of companies out there, and we've talked about this before, and EMC is one cloud of them. Cloud washing. Where they talk a lot about... <laughs> Pat Kelsey you know, might disagree with yeah. you. He's actually but, used the word cloud you know, washing. Well, but, but the, the I don't know if he would disagree. Yeah. We should ask him. Yeah. yeah. The point is is that they don't charge uses-based. Now, they'll say they're enabling customers.
customers. Yeah, but they can't, right? You know How I mean? can they charge usage base? Well, it would kill their yeah, margins. It would kill their revenue. The whole that's bit. VMware. VMware. Right? <laughs> what was that about? Anyway, that's a whole. <laughs> that's, that's a whole. Another fifteen minutes yeah. on the end of the panel. That's true. Cloud. Yeah, exactly. They just got rid of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they don't charge for it though. But, but <laughs> that's just a lot. Right? Yeah. But going back, it's to, free usage. <laughs> but going back to the point is that so you know, and where customers do have concerns about you know, um, you, you know, security and putting stuff in the public cloud. You know, we offer a hybrid and we offer a private cloud, right? So we're the only company out there today that will actually do usage based public, private, and public or um, and hybrid you know in a customer's environment and no one else does that and so what I do now is I actually walk into customers and this is getting a lot of traction and customers say I want cloud I'm like great what does that mean right and so we go through the big discussion about what does that mean every time they say I want usage base that's not an option right customers want usage base for their cloud now they'll say I don't know if I can get my auditors to agree on putting it into one of your data centers I say great what if I put it in your data center and charge a usage base can you do that? Oh my God! If you can do that, that sounds great, right? So why are you able to do that and the other guys can't? What, what's what's? Well, I think there's a couple of reasons. One, one of it is our business model. I mean, there's no question about it. I mean, we have a business model that allows us to do it. As you said very clearly, um, you know, and I, I say this all the time because I was at one of those big storage companies, right? You know, on the on the high end storage, you know, probably. 50% of the data is on the wrong storage. I mean, it's on high expensive storage, right? Which means it needs to come off that. Only 20, 25% of most data should be on that tier one type. Of I never heard you complaining about that when you were in Hitachi data systems. I'm, I'm, I'm coming out right here. So the second one is, uh, I, I, I'm, you, know you never roll the bones of Barry. Yeah. Sure. Do, do you know how many customers I've talked to where I've said, geez, that tier three type environment, you know, 40% utilization, they almost laugh and say that high. Yeah, yeah. Right? They so always say I that wish. high. <laughs> so the point is, is that, you know, so if you believe that to be true, and I think if you ever sat in a room with a customer over a beer who doesn't want to admit it publicly, would probably agree with what I just said. So now all of a sudden you're an EMC, you're HP, you're IBM, you're whoever, um, and you go into a customer and say, I'm going to offer you usage-based pricing. They're going to drive their revenue. They're going to drive their margins down to nothing. You know what I mean? And that's going to be a fundamental problem. That's the dilemma there. And so the technology we're talking about is very disruptive. Now, my software, you know, my file system allows me to do a lot of this stuff too, right? You know, it gives me the capability of doing the provisioning and the billing and the, mm -hmm. you know, the web interfaces and a lot of the stuff we're talking about. Um, and the other thing too, which I think is really critical, is that we do billions of files, not millions of files. And so we have a huge amount of scalability that the other guys don't have. Are you seeing people that uh, that, that that can't scale and that are claiming they can? Yeah. Or is that so is that a, lot, is that unique? I mean, we're hearing a lot of issues around some of our competitors' um, environments where they can't scale. Really? So yeah, and the reason we know about it is because now they're approaching us, talking to us about you know, hey, we want you to come in and have a conversation. Does but that hurt you? I mean, does that, in other words, that that say, I mean, a, a large established company is not able to scale, but. But um, is, is, that, is there a sort of a negative halo effect uh, on you it guys? Could be. Not necessarily on us because, yeah. I mean, they can scale with us, right? But it, it, and you can it, demonstrate that. And we can demonstrate it. it. But it could create a potential somebody sitting at a user group like this saying, hey, I've got, you know, EMC Atmos installed and I can't get it to scale and blah, blah, blah. So cloud's not ready. And they kind of do a blanket. Um, but in most of those environments, if we heard that, we'd go in, we'd have a conversation and we'd show them why we can scale better than them. And, um, you know, usually we end up winning those guys Scott, back. final question for you because we got uh, we're, up, we're okay. behind a little bit on time. Apologize, but uh, uh, congratulations on a lot of stuff. What's next for you guys? What's happening now? What's the action for Nirvana? You guys have done yeah. really well. You've yeah. taken over at the helm. Mm -hmm. um, you got the funding. Mm -hmm. You guys are fully funded. Great right. customer traction. Right. What's... What's happening right now and, yeah. and what's around the corner for Nirvana? Well, I, th I think a couple things, right? I mean, one is is that, you know, our, our, our plan now, because the market's ready, is really to go in what we call this hyper growth, right? Um, we're investing pretty aggressively in sales. Um, we're investing more in engineering to c come out with the follow-on product. We are in our second generation of product. We're about to come out with our third generation of product. Everyone else is in alpha, beta, early stuff, um, that. And then um, we're aggressively going after the channel. You're going to see a big play for us to go after the channel. We're going to productize the cloud and put it in the channel. And, you, and, and be on the lookout for a couple more OEM agreements. So. All right. Nirvonics is on the roll. Nirvonics is rolling strong with Scott Genero at the helm. Channel plan coming around the corner. Third generation product. Clearly a good lead. And everyone else, congratulations. And uh, great stuff in Japan on that, uh, on that uh, gesture. I thought it was fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks for coming well on theCUBE right. again. Thank you. Scott, Appreciate it was a pleasure. It. Yep.